Hey everyone, how's it going? This is D. I'm coming from Catalyst Energies. This is your Catalyst Report. Thank you for joining me. And I'm so grateful that you're here. This is your Catalyst Report for the first quarter moon. That is the moon at 12 degrees, 39 minutes of Taurus as of February 1st, 2020 at 5.42 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that would be 8.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And this is um, a weekly report that follows the lunar cycle um, by quarter. And so we'll go through the first quarter square, what it means and how it um, relates to the middle of the lunar cycle, which will be our full moon that happens on February 8th um, in Leo. 20 degrees Leo. And so we'll talk about the first quarter moon, what it represents, and how the week is going to unfold astrologically to give us um, an idea of how best to work with the moon um, in her cycle in order to um, align with what's going on as opposed to being thrashed around. And that very well, I wouldn't say thrashed around, but I would definitely say that it's been, um, we've especially with the moon just coming into late Aries and squaring a lot of the Capricorn energy. I feel like that we've really hit a wall big time. Um, some of us, not everybody. Um, and really with the first quarter square, it's the sun in Aquarius squaring a moon in Taurus. And um, she does love to be in Taurus. Um, and this is for the first at the actual, um, the square, exact um, between the sun and Aquarius here and the moon in Taurus here. So when she does come into the moon, she's going to be pretty happy. And that's happening. Actually, I'm making this video today on the 31st. And um, she is going to merge with Taurus in just a couple of hours. And so things are going to slow down. And there's been a lot of um, potency with the moon in Aries, a lot of confidence and ambition and, want, and, and an instinctual feel and a drive. Um, in order to really um, advocate for ourselves and to um, actualize this potential. And it's been a very, um, it's been, a, we've been feeling it, you know, it's, it's been something going on underneath the surface. Um, I think it's been coming out in the dream state as well and certainly has been disrupting sleep, I think, um, because, you know, the moon usually comes out um, at, or we see the moon for the most part at night when there's no sun shining uh, in our sky. And so it makes sense that the moon in Aries would disrupt sleep and have it be um, just less restful than it could be. But when she moves into Taurus, I have a feeling that that's going to change. You know, she wants to feel good. She wants to feel comfortable. Taurus is all about the physical things around us that we feel comfortable and that we feel like we are, um, you know, planted into... Um, sufficiently and it's definitely about comfort which i think ultimately is going to be where the crisis potentially the crisis in action that is the first quarter square um right here you can see fixed air and fixed earth having completely different trajectories in terms of where they're headed and the first quarter is a crisis in action it's where the um, it's really the first roadblock after the um, seed's been planted with the new moon. And it has, to, and, and it does stimulate us to actually act or what we have been doing is feeling some sort of blockage or a need to reevaluate or change course or course correction. So I think that there's going to be a real it's strong pull especially because the moon loves to be in Taurus, she's really going to pull us back into places that um, feel comfortable. And when the square exacts, the two, you know, Aquarius really is getting, the sun is really getting deep now into the concept of Aquarius that becomes more challenging and um, more necessary for, necessary for us to tap into our intellect, which is, you know, the social responsibility that goes along with Aquarius. When you understand the connection between everything and that you are um, realizing the picture beyond the material realm and how it's all connected. You have this cosmic, almost alien perspective 
um, that's thinking about things way outside of just, you know, the physical, the physical um, creation of reality around us. When we start thinking about it, there's also a responsibility that goes along with it. There's a social responsibility. And, you know, Aquarius is directly opposed from um, Leo. Here's Leo, which is where the full moon is going to be. And so this crisis in action um, is the sun still give, you know, being the center of attention in terms of the social responsibility that's involved with being the water bearer and taking care of what's good for the collective, what's good for society, what's good for the group, and having it be square to a moon that's really drawing us in to feel comfortable and to do the things that um, allow us to feel safe and comfortable in a very physical way. And, you know, that's like eating a good meal, you know, getting all curled up and watching Netflix. I had talked about this in the daily that I wrote, but this, it's going to be more than that, just that, because as the moon, you know, it's moves through Taurus. She's going to be drawing us even further into wanting to, um, you know, really like settle into something. And the degrees that the moon is in when it squares the sun is very much about a compulsion to gain things, to collect things, to be successful materially um, in order, to, and, and there's like a baggage kind of element to it. And so there's going to be this square that brings to the surface this tension between what we know is best for everybody and also to just be mindful and planful and being able to predict what's going to happen, to anticipate what's going to happen in Aquarius so that you can um, do what's best. And this compulsion for gaining something, we're going to see, we're going to, and, and the moon is very much about how we feel in the moment. And so we're going to be pulled right into it. And I think that um, for a minute, it's going to feel good and it'll be nice to slow down. But I also see the tension that is um, there between being able to um, not get caught in, in the material trap necessarily and still being able to have the long view about and being able to anticipate the weather essentially and being, and having the tools at your disposal to, um, be able to, um, not predict, but be able to measure, you know, certain aspects of nature around you in order to then have a reasonable idea of what's going to happen, you know, like weather, essentially. And with Mercury and getting into the very later stages of Aquarius, um, not only is it about being predict, you know, being able to see ahead and predict the weather, you know, for the whole group so that you can plan for things, it's also about actually using your skill. And I think that we would be well advised to follow Mercury's ability to communicate these um, ideas and these concepts to us and for us to also gather them from the world around us in terms of what is it, um, you know, what are our skills that we do have now and how can we use our actual like physical strength and ability to do work in order to um, plan ahead for something that we might not necessarily anticipate but could be a reasonable anticipation. There's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of imagery about weather and predicting the weather and being prepared for it with these Aquarius symbols, which is going to, is going to be in, you know, is going to be really challenging the moon, just drawing us into wanting to be comfortable and like, just take, you know, I just want to like eat a good meal and like wrap up and, you know, and be warm and be comfortable and only have beautiful things around me, and that's really great, but at the same time, um, we're still having to focus on the long view here, and the sun and Mercury are still pointing us to that, so, and that's going to be the crisis in what we actually do in action, what are we actually doing with our time, with our energy, um, what is the long-term goal here, and are we following through with it, so, um, and then the moon after squaring the sun, this is Saturday, the first, is also going to try and Jupiter in Capricorn, which is getting more, you know, sucked into historical perspective, more sucked into the tradition of things and more crusty as he goes through Capricorn. And so the moon again is really going to be supporting and be very balanced with Jupiter in this, you know, it's just going to want, I don't know, I just get this 
sense of like being part of you know an old like in an old library or an old museum or like the old standard the old traditions of how we teach things and the old traditions of how we do things and how we um learn things the moon's going to pull us back into that too and it's going to be really balanced and so it's just going to be like and, and there's nothing wrong with those things there's things as part of our tradition and our legacy with capricorn that are like very much still functional and are worth seeing for what they are and so the moon can also pull us into being comfortable with that and like not being you know it's okay to kind of settle back into some of these traditions and some of these teachings in order to um understand how really to work with what we have um, but i think really what's going to be worth very much paying attention to with this crisis are two things one mercury is going to be this is the point right after the, the squares when mercury hits the point degree wise where he will come back to in this upcoming retrograde which is going to be um in like two weeks i can't remember the date exactly it's going to be mid-february he's going to you know, Mercury's going to go into, this week actually, going to go into Pisces and then eventually go retrograde and it's going to come back to where it, he is now or at the square. So pay attention to what's going on with communications, your thoughts, your ideas, the language you use, the symbols, the information coming in and going out. Pay attention, especially when it comes to how can you plan ahead for the future? How can you plan ahead for the greater good? Because this is where Mercury is going to come back to this point. So this is something to keep under your hat and remember when it's when it comes back to this point because it's beginning a shadow period now. It's that and Venus in Pisces getting into the later, you know, 25, 23 degrees, 24 degrees Pisces, sextiling Pluto. And Venus in Pisces has just been really, really nice, but also is getting to the point where it's starting to get a little delusional and very confusing and kind of like what is actually going on but there's this idea that we can accept where our limitations are so that we can still move forward and be part of a group and like kind of you know be easy on forgiving and compassionate towards ourselves too knowing that we're not perfect um knowing that we can uh we can still be ourselves and still have our limitations and still be a completely functioning member of the group or the whole and be um have something to add like there's absolutely that possibility and there's a sextile to pluto which is still like you know still in this place in capricorn where it's completely you know breaking it down in order to mulch it into, and provide the fertilizer for something else better to grow um when it comes to the way that we you know um the the, the way that we see our power within material creation you know Capricorn is definitely about materials and seriousness, but it's about the power of natural law. I mean, if this is like a, to that down to the very basics of how cells split and how DNA replicates and how plants grow and how the cycle of nature continues on and on and on and it creates things. And this is um, this is powerful. And Pluto there is is very, also really powerful. And is having this wonderful you know sextile to venus right here so here's pluto and capricorn venus in late pisces um this is you know this re this reconfiguration of what it means to have power in a very material way and like what pluto has been teaching us about it is very much supporting now this idea of where our power is within the context of the group. Again, we're going back to the group. Aquarius and Pisces is the point where you realize that you move past the idea of duality that's necessary part of reality and you see beyond that the wholeness of everything from an intellectual perspective and then with Pisces from a complete feeling and emotional perspective. And we we can accept our limitations to be part of the whole because that is you know that's where the power actually is in creating something and i think that pluto has consistently you know for 12 years has been breaking this all down for us so that we can have a more a different perspective about it but venus here showing us to forgive ourselves and to be compassionate ourselves and accept that everything is perfect basically within the context of relationships is really getting supported by um 
and supporting Pluto's ability to break down our relationship to material power. Because when we don't have to worry so much about being perfect and still being part of something, um, there's, there's not the same ambition to like outdo everybody else because you just accept yourself and know that it's still perfect. I think that's beautiful because I think that it's going to be a hard, it's going to, I can already feel it getting people getting pulled into like how they can make themselves feel comforted after all the squares to the Capricorn energy. So that's what's going on here. This is all, um, this is where the first quarter square. So we're going to take this energy and we're going to move through the week up to the full moon because I'm going to tell you, I'll do a whole report on each sign because this full moon is just bananas and it's really going to put a lot of focus on what's best for everything, everybody, the long-term plan, the social collective, and what do we want for ourselves? What is it that makes us be express ourselves the moon the full moon is going to bring it up it's going to be it's going to be right everything that's been bubbling on the surface is the moon is going through taurus and gemini and cancer it's all going to start like getting more obvious and more obvious until we get to this point in leo that's just like who am i what do i have to offer and is it about me and the sun is still in aquarius going no i'm trying to show you that it's all about us and that it can only be but it can only be all about us if we are all each. Oh, it's only about me because we have to get right with ourselves first. So this whole week is going to be about understanding what that actually means in the context of the whole. Because once we get to the full moon, we're going to have to release a lot of stuff. And, the, and it's, they're not easy degrees at all. It's very much about like kind of losing it in some ways or certainly being disappointed and disillusioned. And I think that's what's going to, I think that kind of already happened and it's gonna just like crescendo into the full moon. So let's go through the week real quick. Um, let me get my mouse going and we're gonna clear all my drawings. All right, so this is, um, we're moving into the 2nd of February. So the moon is still in um, Taurus at this point. And um, she's already passed, um, here she's already past uh, Uranus, obviously, and is you know sextiling to Neptune. You know, there's a lot more blue here, um, sextiling to uh, try you know to Venus as well, sextiling to Venus as well, and then trining. You know, the moon now is trining the Capricorn energy, it's 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 balanced with it. Um, I and she's definitely pulling us in towards what can we do to be the most comfortable, the most secure financially? Um, what can we, you know, what's, what allows us to harmonize with our, ourselves, with the environment the, the most? And um, I think that, you know, this is right here, this is Black Moon Lilith and Chiron coming into a con uh, conjunction with each other. And that is Wow, to having right after the square, we got this wounding of the self, of the ego, this like, you know, questioning our very existence, lining up with Black Moon Lilith, the true Lilith, um, which is about survival. It's, it's, it's root chakra. It's even, it's, it's like the basis of instincts of um, surviving and um, asserting yourself without even thinking about it it's just about survival and coming in so this is going to really trigger um trigger something amazing or terrible it could really go either way and so um and again with the moon in taurus it's definitely um you know slowing us down and getting us to ground more and trining the pluto and capricorn Pluto and Saturn and Capricorn, and also having a sextile to Venus and Pisces. I think this is going to be where we get more out of the Taurus energy. It's less about trying to gain something and like, um, you know, gather material things. And it's more about like, um, even mastering that energy of like being um, totally um, in line with your physical environment, like, um, you know, being very firmly planted within the medium and understanding that and understanding that everything you need is around you and you don't have to actually like, you know, collect things. Um, 
and it's really balanced with the Capricorn energy. So, I mean, it just depends on what you've been doing with Saturn and Pluto. If it's been, if you've been working with them or if you've been resisting them, um, you could, this could be very slothful or it could be um, uh, very grounding. So that's on the second. So we move to the third, the moon's moving into Gemini now. And this is also when Mercury moves into Pisces at this point. So here's our Mercury moving into Pisces. And we have um, our moon now moving into Gemini. So kind of a little bit of a uh, swap just because the moon really does like to be in Pisces, it seems like. And Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. And so our thoughts and ideas are going to get real dreamy. They're going to get real foggy. They're going to get really confusing. Um, but the moon in Gemini is at least giving us an ability to entertain multiple ideas and to be curious about them and to feel like that there is a potential for something to grow out of the collection of all of these ideas and concepts. Um, and Mercury is going to let us be a little bit, you know, uh, more willing to dive into those spaces that normally, you know, the psychic spaces, you know, the intuitive spaces. This is where we get some more inspiration artistically and creatively. And I think with the moon in Gemini, it's a nice balance. So it's not just one way or the, not all in our head or we're not all just like in the spirit realm all the time. There's a nice um, connection and a balance there. Um, as she moves, she's going to stay in Gemini. We're moving on to the fourth. And, um, you know, she's going to stay in Gemini and she's going to um, oppose Mars in Sagittarius. So this is definitely an opportunity right here to be, you know, have, an, have a chance to really consider our belief system and, you know, what is it that we're charging forward um, for the sake of and a moon opposing that is certainly um, drawing us inward to consider how we feel about that and maybe feel some other options, maybe feel that there are other opportunities and maybe, uh, you know, Mars is really trying, Mars is really getting to the point now where he's mastering his understanding and he's going to start using it for actual alchemy. So um, the moon is just like, are you sure? You know, these are other other aspects and other things to consider and like especially if things have not been going the way you want them to um this is definitely a chance to make sure that mars is um you know backed by the right belief system he tends to you know be very optimistic but also thinks <laughs> you know sagittarius thinks that they're right all the time and they usually are because um, they're always searching for the truth and the honest point of um information but with the moon there it's um at, le and at least feeling like there's a reason to consider other options or to be curious about other ideas um before really like committing to those last uh 10 degrees or so let's see yeah mars right here is at like 20 what does it say 22 degrees of sagittarius so getting close to the galactic center so it'll be it'll be good to let the moon kind of draw us into being more curious about it just to be sure we know what's up um, and that is also when Black Moon Lilith, true Lilith, um, connects with Venus, and so in Pisces. And so now Lilith is in Pisces, and that, you know, it's more about the um, root chakra and survival when it comes to a lot, a lot broader of a matrix. You know, we're talking about, like, the, the, the field from which it all comes, and Black Moon Lilith is, I think it's a little bit harder in Pisces because she kind of loses herself a little bit and she kind of dissolves into it and there's a little bit of um I don't you know it's hard for the it's hard from an instinctual perspective to just let go of your ego because you don't even realize that's what's happening so Venus I think will allow that to happen a little bit more they'll provide a little bit of safety and kind of like oh that's not so bad um She also could be totally delusional about it and be like, yeah, it's great over here, Lilith. Like, go ahead and just like dissolve um, yourself and your sense of self and power. And uh, so it really just depends. I think it depends also too, if you're willing to entertain those ideas in Capricorn or Gemini with the moon, it'd be curious and a little bit like uncommittal, non-committal. Um, as a, you know, as a way to reassess what's going on with Mars, if that's just been like, you know, 
is you're getting pretty close to some mastery there with the understanding and you want to make sure that you have all the details, I think. So um, moving on to the fifth, um, the moon is going to, you know, move from Gemini into Cancer and yay, because the moon loves to be in Cancer. It's where she's at home. And we have Mercury that's going to sextile. Mercury in uh, uh, Pisces right here is going to sextile the uh, Uranus in Taurus. And um, yeah, this is going to be, this is going to be kind of interesting and fun just because we're going to really um, get some creative ideas to help with um, these, the, the, you know, this awakening from a very material, um, physical perspective, you know, the innovation in terms of how we are reconceptualizing from a, from a collective level. Uranus is about collective open, opening and awakening. Um, we, as Mercury's, Mercury is our mind, like, is the individual, the personal mind is certainly going to be supporting this collective, um, awakening or this innovation in a collective way about our material resources and our material life. And so there'll be some inspiration there, especially the moon coming into cancer. Then it's just going to be like, we're going to feel very supported and that we need security and maybe we'll feel security. Um, might be, and Cause she's going to also come around and sextile Uranus um, from a different angle. And so there'll be, um, there'll be a sextile between Mercury and um, Uranus and then the moon and Uranus and a trine between the moon and Mercury. And so there's gonna be this um, very supportive, uh, emotionally supportive um, balance with what's coming through in our minds and our communication when it comes to being inspired by beautiful things, compassionate things, getting into the spiritual realm. And that's really going to support um, the collective shift um in a physical way that uranus has just been constantly like going through and at this point um it, it's going to be soon that uranus is going to move into a new degree and it's going to carry a whole different frequency but that's going to be later so we're going to move on to the sixth and uh the moon now fully in cancer is going to conjunct with the north node so that's going to be we're going to be feeling um very supported um, we're going to be personally aligned with the collective kind of focus of um, cultivating our personal power. It's going to feel good. There's going to be um, an opposition to Jupiter as well. Um, and he's, you know, the crusty old professor, the crusty old guru in Capricorn, just sticking to like, it's like a Brahmin almost, right? That they are, um, in terms of, you know, before Buddhism came and it was very much focused on the tradition and very much focused on the ritual and like the actual material creation of things, but it wasn't, you know, it's not necessarily the most inspired, um, which is hard for Jupiter. So the moon is going to really oppose that space and having us feel way more secure to kind of like branch out on our own as opposed to, you know, having to go back to the Brahmin or, you know, the, the crusty guru to get our rights or whatever, our religious rights, so that we feel like that we're in God's good graces, whatever that means. Um, and yeah, and then she's going to try Neptune. That's going to be, you know, in Pisces. So there's going to be much more of a spiritually based within us kind of feeling. And uh, moving on to the seventh is when she's going to move into Leo. And so at this point, she's going to oppose all the Capricorn energy that's really the Pluto and Saturn Capricorn energy she's going to oppose. Um, and I think this is going to really get us to a place where we are feeling like feeling very much a need to be personally secure and powerful. Um, despite the things that have been recalibrated as a result of Saturn and Pluto. Um, this is also when Venus moves into Aries. So bam, I mean, she's going to just like come out of the, you know, just come out of there shooting, essentially. She's like, all right, I'm ready to get some shit done. And I am fabulous. And I'm right here. And like, I'm, you know, she's ready. She's ready to go. It's all potency and potential with Venus. And she's, you know, she's ready to, um, she's ready to celebrate. And I think, and then the moon trining her right after that, because the moon will be in Leo. 
um, is really going to support this too, in terms of like, okay, now you're really going to feel like, you know, in your, in your personal, like identity of who you are and being self-expressive and like really opening your heart. And at the same time, Venus has moved into a, a fire sign that is allowing for this potency and this confidence when it comes to relationships and our, and like what feels good and what our resources are and like what the, you know, what appeals to us in our senses, in our, in our personal life. Um, uh, the moon in Leo is definitely going to square Uranus, and this is where it's going to start getting weird again, because right after this is the full moon, um, 20 degrees Aquarius, 20 degrees of Leo, and not only is it the full moon, we have Mercury that's going to be trining the north node, so there is a little bit of support there, but it is going to be a very big reveal as far as I can tell. So that's the week, the first quarter square up to the full moon. Um, February 2020. So we're looking at the 1st through the 8th. I'm going to go live on YouTube later today and do a live reading for all 12 signs. So we'll look at where the first quarter square moon is happening in your part of the chart based on whole sign astrology and then pull a card to give some added uh, insight or guidance or something, you know, in addition to think about. So I would say you know, take, take care of yourselves. The moon is really pulling you into taking care of yourselves and being comfortable, but realize that it is potential. It's, it's a short term, short lived comfort and it might serve a purpose right now, but don't lose sight of the long view and what you came here to do in this life and what your goals are in terms of building something collectively, because that's really what it's all about and there is a lot of support to keep your focus there but i would also say that um it'll be really easy to slip into a place where you are getting comfort by collecting more um material things and rather than staying focused on the collective goal that we're all here to do so i hope this um, message found you well and you got some um got some anything out of it i get something out of it just by communicating it and channeling the information through so thank you for being here i really appreciate you if you like what you hear please subscribe i'm really trying to get my subscription count up because i would love to um have any hope of having this monetized so i can um, be compensated for on any level for providing this type of information i really love doing it and i would like to um, focus even more attention on it so um i am on facebook that's kind of the hub of where everything happens so if you want to look at the description box below you can find all of that information about how to get a hold of me how to get to my facebook page you can book readings from my facebook page online and you'll get a video just like this sent um to you and um to give you some insight into what's going on in your life and maybe giving you the the tools and the symbols and the um the themes in order for you to narrate and author your own story of your life. So thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will see you on the live in a couple hours um, to do more of an intuitive reading. Okay, bye.